Hey guys, this is Tom Box coming at you out of YCS, remote YCS, and I have a top 32 contender with us today. We have Zahair Khan and um, Brandon Garrett. I have never featured an Ignister profile ever on this channel. I don't even know how the deck even works. So I got resident expert right here, Zahair Khan, who just recently topped. So how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. This was um. Like the first YCS that I seriously played in, and I don't know the matchups just worked out. It feels great to have like topped a premier event. Yeah, that's really good. What the first one in your belt? Many more to come. So you chose to play Attic Nister. Like, why did you choose this deck over all the other options? Uh, this is kind of a deck where you have a whole bunch of one card engines, and oh, like a whole bunch of different slots in the main deck to like counter specific meta games. Um, I didn't want to enter this event playing. One of the best decks that I wasn't confident I could win the mirror match in, right? Like, which deck is that? Like the Drytron mirror match, or the Striker mirror match, or like VW or Tri Brigade, all mm -hmm. of which are very powerful decks, all of which I believe topped. Yes, they all do. Um, yeah, but that that's almost like a numbers game, right? So many people are playing those decks that one of those was bound to top. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wasn't as comfortable in the mirror match playing those decks. Yeah. And so I figured uh, my odds were probably better playing something to beat all of those different decks. Uh, expanding on that a little bit, I personally wanted a deck that could have space for a lot of hand traps so that I could have a good going second game against a lot of decks. And then I also felt like the core engine of this deck is better than some of those other decks, such as Prank Kids that can fit a lot of hand traps um, at going second. Mm -hmm. it, you're much more reliably able to kill your opponent going second, and it, it felt a lot better okay. when you lost the die roll. Yeah. All right. Now, before I jump into the deck list, then the combo, and then the tournament report, the floor is yours for all the shoutouts you want to give. Oh, yeah. Um, first off, a uh, shout out to Dan Parker and YG Organization. Second off, shout out to True Man's World. Uh, shout out to Ozone. And then, um, Specifically, shout out to Jose Venegas and Jake Moe for lending me multiple expensive $100 staples before the event that I decided to not even use in the first place. It was really nice of them. That, that, that actually <laughs> reminds me of what I did. I actually lended out all my droplets and triple tactic talents out. Like the entire. I lended out my entire Tri Brigade core with Aww. all those cards out. So I'm like, you know what? You and I are kind of on the same boat here. <laughs> Okay, so you finished off the tournament with a 9-2 and two record, uh, making yeah. it to the top 32 cut. So uh, why don't we go into the deck profile, and then we'll go into some awesome tournament reports, some combos, so that we know what this deck actually does. Okay, so starting off, we yeah. have the key field spell uh, at Eastern Island with the recent release in uh, the Lightning Overdrive. This card is now searchable, which is huge. Yeah, so Ignister Island is probably just the most broken card in the entire deck. Um, it says that well, whenever it's on the field and your main monster zones are empty, you can special summon an Ad Ignister from your hand for free. And you can do that once for every single attribute, right? Mm -hmm. So you can summon a fire, a light, a dark, an earth, a water, a wind, all from your hand for free in the same turn provided your main monster zone is empty, right? Okay. And that's like, this is the main card that like anchors the deck and keeps the combo running, right? It's the way you clear your bodies out of your hand. It's a little bit different from, from like a Salomon Great Sanctuary or Boot Sector launch because um, we actually want to draw it. it. In Salad, if you get Ashed on the Bail Links, it's fine. If you get Ashed on the Striker Dragon, it's fine. But in this deck, you need the island to play. So we play the maximum legal copies, four. Yep. Yeah. Island and one terraforming. And this is like a one card starter because it's thanks to Dark Infant being able to search it as well. So um it's really nice to open this card in your opening hand. Okay. It means that um yeah, when you summon cards like the card, you can grab cards that aren't the field spell. It's always a card you want to see in your opening hand. And it lets you play through a lot of interrupts. Okay, so then we have triple Achichi Agnister and we have triple Picari. These are your I guess quote unquote Stratos is of the deck as they, they both search different things. One searches for a level four or lower Ignister monster, and the other one searches for, as you already mentioned, spells and traps. And oh, uh, um, how do they work together? This whole deck has, I believe, t is it 12 different starters? You yeah. have the three copies of Achichi, Picari, Sinet Mining, and I Meet You. 
Um, all of these are cards that, if you activate them, they grab one piece of the combo, and then they loop into the other that loops into Doyon as your third piece to get the combo rolling, right? Like, um, Achichi, the red one, on summon, searches an Adagnister from your deck to your hand. So, off your one card combo, like, Achichi grabs Picari. Uh, Picari can grab I Meet You, and I Meet You grabs Doyon from the deck to hand. Um, if you have... Uh, Picari. Then you summon Picari. You grab I Meet You. I Meet You grabs Achichi, and then you summon Achichi. Grab Doyon. Right. Cyanide Mining is just another copy of either of those three monsters, depending on which one you want. Well, I guess that kind of covers most of these cards here, because most of these are search cards. For this is for more cyber searching. This one is Reveal yeah. a Cybers with 2300 attack uh, in your hand or extra deck, and add a Gnister monster with the same attribute. And uh, during the end phase, you, will, you take damage if you did not special summon out that yeah so they, we already mentioned doyon what's so special about doyon so this is probably just one of the best adagnisters in the deck after picari and achichi um so in the normal combo you summon doyon doyon grabs the ignister that you normal summon mm -hmm. so that you can special summon it off of the effect of the field spell yeah and um aside from that when it's sent from field to grave as link material for a cybers monster uh, it grabs um, I Meet You or any other AI spell or trap from your grave to your hand. Yeah. So when your main combo is over, you have a starter in your hand for next turn. It's like a Skarm or like a Virtual World GG, except it is even better because it's adding back a monster and a spell or trap. And then we have the line of the other attributes that Gachikiri. This one provides the immunity and you can target one of your cyber's effect monster you control negate its effect and summon it out and i believe when it's uh, sent to the grave you make one of your monsters immune to all card effects until the end of the opponent's turn yeah exactly this is one of the most broken cards in the deck um just because it can summon itself for free without requiring an empty main monster zone mm -hmm. and it also like when you make access code you um like activate gachiri before access codes effect in chain and you protect access code from cards like Nibiru and Impermanence. Oh and it lets you like force an OTK going second. This is actually a really good chain blocker as well. Especially yeah. from stuff like Ghost Spell. Then there is Hiari. Hiari is just another Adagnister special summon. Mm -hmm. um, if you control an Adagnister monster, you can special summon it from your hand. Usually in Adagnister list, people are um, debating whether or not to play Doyon or play Hiari and Gachiri. Brandon Doshin. and I thought yeah, Doshin. Um Brandon and I thought that Hiari was better because aside from the fact that it can special summon itself, has a secondary ability where it can tribute another Cyberus monster you control and then add Gachiri from deck to hand. Oh, okay. So it can replace any other link material you have with Gachiri to provide immunity for whatever the next link monster you make. Uh, one important um, thing about that is that, like, the yeah. Gachiri's level 8, so you can't search it off of um, a Chichi or Signet Mining, but because you can search the Hiari, then you can use the Hiari to get into the Gachiri. So it allows you to essentially search Gachiri off of a Chichi or Signet Mining, even though it's too high level. One other thing to note is that, like, if you already open um, a Chichi and Picari, then the I meet you that you can grab can reveal transcode talker in the extra deck to grab Gachiri from deck to hand. So then we have Baruru. I believe this is the one where you synchro and the other synchro material gets summoned back onto the field. It's also one of the follow ups. We have Dan Mari, which is. How does this one come out? And then Bururu on summon will send Dunmari from deck to grave. Okay, there it is. When Dunmari is in grave and you control a rival Cybers, it basically acts like a quick effect hot red dragon. Yeah. Where well, you can banish it from grave and negate any face up card on the field as a quick effect. Then we have yeah. Idle Reborns. Idle Reborns being a quick play, I guess, quote unquote monster reborn. Eye contact, if you have extra copies of Ignister Island, they're not bad, just reveal Ignister Island in your hand, put it to the bottom of the deck, draw three cards. That's... It's a pretty good plus one, and it definitely yeah. fixes up a lot of hands and it wins games for sure. Um, it's it's definitely a really powerful card for sure, especially on um, 
either like turn three or four, depending on when, um, whether you went first or second. Uh, if you have Idol Reborn, you can start your turn two play by summoning Doyon from Grave. Mm -hmm. Doyon grabbing Picari or a Chichi. Okay. And then um, when Doyon is sent to Grave, you can add one of the field spells from Grave to Hand. And the Picari you search can grab Eye Contact, mm. which can let you draw three. Um, it's also just a really good card to have whenever you open the field spell. Yeah. Because then your summon of Picari can just grab Eye Contact from deck. When you link summon your first Attic Nister into Dark Infant, yeah. you grab another copy of the field spell. Yeah. So at that point, like if you open a field spell, you can search Eye Contact from the deck and either force an Ash or draw three. Now we're going to some uh, more common staples here. We have Call of the Grave, which is one of the best cards in the format. Triple yeah. Ash, I think it's a really good card. One of the best hand traps of the format. Nibiru is also really good for a lot of the board builders, uh, including Drytron. Again, remember, Nibiru plus another hand trap usually means Nibiru will go through and cripple yeah. the board. Bell is another really good call, and it's, it's just one of the best hand traps of the format. DD Crow. Okay, DD Crow kind of want to just you know quickly kind of run over this. Against a couple striker players, they would go like summon Hayate, send Engage, activate Kagari, target Engage. <laughs> Ooh, and then you a... just crow them and you don't have to worry about Engage for the whole game. <laughs> yeah, that's basically uh, the end of that. That's a that's a wasted turn, in my opinion, on their side. Okay, now yeah. here's the here's some spice I see here. A main deck Gadarla. This card was insane in a whole bunch of matchups. Um, like, it, you could, against a striker matchup, um, tribute their striker monster. You turn off all of their quick play spells in the main mon in the spell trap zones. Um, against Salamangrate, you can, like, tribute the Sunlight Wolf and then turn off the Rage and Roar, um, unless they have, like, a solid card in hand. In the mirror match, which I, I didn't see okay. any, um, if they make the arrival... You can summon Gadarla, you turn off the Denmari effect in Grave, and it's much easier to OTK. I think it's a good call then. Like, there's a lot of yeah. coverage and a lot of the, like, it switches off, like, the back row. So the one thing to note is that if you summon Gadarla, then you are unable to summon Transcode Talker that turn, because Transcode Talker says you can't summon anything other than Cybers Monsters the turn you summon it. But usually that's not something to worry about, because your usual combo route, um, either to make Arrival on turn one, or to make access code in OTK on turn two, mm -hmm. does not involve Transcode Talker. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds good. Go ahead. We chose Gadarla over any other kaiju. Um, people were on the Wind Barrier statue, especially in Tri Brigade. Yep. Uh, but we didn't see any of it in any of the top cut lists that anybody played. We didn't play against any people on it in our rounds. Yeah. So maybe that's a an opportunity to change it to another kaiju. But I still think it's a good choice because it gives you the most well-rounded coverage. Okay, now we're going to go into the extra deck. I'm just going to quickly go over this. So Dark Infant, mainly used to search out Ignistra Island. And that's probably your first play. Ignistra Island summons out something and you usually you will link it off into something else. Uh, that's yeah. probably going to be the first. The first one's going to be Cyber's Wicked. If a monster summoned to the zone this points to you... Well, you get more stuff. You can banish a Cybers uh, monster from your graveyard and add a Cybers tuner. And I believe you do have a tuner. That yeah. is your Buru. This is what grabs yeah. your Buru. That's what grabs your Buru. Then you go into Splash Mage. This is one of your grave summons that lead to the next play. And then you summon into the Igni Wind Ignister. Because you use Buru for it, you get to another monster back. Basically, it's a bunch of monster spam lined up all the way to Dark Templar. And. Um, Basically, yeah. off the one-card yeah. combo, you end on an Arrival Cybers for 4,000 attack because yeah. Dark Templar summons three to the zones it points to. Yeah. But if you open an extra extender in your hand, like Gachiri or Hiari, the card you normal summon, you grab it off of Doyon, and then you summon that under Dark Templar. Yep. And when you turn that into uh, your second Dark Infant, you move Dark Infant, change it to Divine, you revive three attributes from Grave, and you don't have play any other Earth or Water monsters mm -hmm. in the deck. So you summon the Earth or Water as your final attribute. And then because you control six different attributes, including Divine, yep. you can then link into Arrival Cybers for 6,000. Which was oh. a lot harder for a lot of different decks out. Yeah, for sure. This is one of the hardest things to kill. And it gains 1,000 per link material you use, unaffected by other card effects the only other monster that has this effect is uh fucho and uh being unaffected by everything is 
super impressive. And you also have the ignition once per turn pop a card. Yeah. And then summon out a token. If you can't answer this in like one or two turns, it's over. Now, as for the other parts of the package, this starts to resemble parts of like Salamangri combo. Of course, Transcode Talker into Update Jammer. That gives you the access code talker with the double attack, usually at 5,300 for yeah. 10k worth of damage. Link Spider, I don't know what you yeah. use this for. So, um, this is a card that we have to play. Just because if we want to continue playing with Ignister Island, um, if our opponent Nibiru's us, we're left with a token in the main monster zone. We're locked out of summoning any additional ad Ignisters from our hand for free. So Link Spider just lets us move the token to the extra monster zone and let us summon our extenders and keep playing the game. Similar deal with the Security Dragon right after. Um, we play Nibiru in this deck, mm -hmm. right? We have no monster in the extra deck that Nibiru can turn into. Oh, it can turn into transcode, but like, it's... transcode. It's just literally transcode and security dragon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very um, limited options. Uh, so you need to clear off the anything. Nibiru. Yeah, then uh, you play security dragon it's the only, to... Like, two that can clear. Yeah, to clear the Nibiru from the main monster zone. So, like, you summon your normal summon, you grab whatever card you need, you turn into infant, you grab the field spell, and then before you summon the Wicked, you turn Nibiru and the infant into security dragon. I like, I like the options not to trip over your own plays. There's always some, some yeah. follow-up. And then there's Light Ignister and Fire Phoenix. The yeah, it's you, it's usually difficult to summon Light Dragon at Ignister from the extra deck just because you're, like, usually committing all your material to Link plays. Mm -hmm. um, its primary use, uh, along with Fire Phoenix at Ignister, is just for the spell card I Meet You. Okay. A Fire Phoenix's effect is relevant. It does come up um, in time because it can just burn for 2300 when it declares an attack. Um, I've used that to win games before. Okay. Oh, so yeah. every, every deck has their time option. It seems like this one is the Fire <laughs> Phoenix. All right, that's fine. Yeah, one, one thing you have to be aware of is that um, if you do reveal Light Dragon or Fire Phoenix, you're likely not summoning those on your turn. And so in the end phase, you will be taking 2300 unless you like commit all your plays to either of those cards, which I think is a bit suboptimal. Um, one thing you can do, though, which is nice, if you open um, either, like, some combination of the two out of three, um, Achichi, Picari, or I Meet You, if you open two of the three, then you can activate the I Meet You to grab Doyen out of the deck by revealing either Dark Templar at Ignister if you're going first, okay. because you summoned that going first to make a rival, okay. or revealing Access Code Talker if you're going second and attempting to OTK. All right. And then you don't get burned. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, okay, for the side deck, I'm going to run through this because there's only one card that I have real questions for. Triple Twin Twister, back row hate. I think you don't like TC boot at all. Uh, red reboot for, well, just taking out, you, you can just kill your opponent if you red reboot and there's no fear of the back row. Same for this. Uh, Droll and Lockbird, Drytron matchups. I think it's also with the mirror match as well because there are quite a few searches that come along. Uh, Pancratops, go second, uh, extra board brick, extra pressure, uh, triple yeah. forbidden droplet, turn off Drytron boards at the very least, and uh, I'm sure there's many, many more applications. And then this is interesting, the Eagle Booster. Why yeah. the Eagle Booster um, inside? So this is a card that was actually Dan Parker's idea. Um, the theory behind it is that it forces your Dark Infant to go through. And it like ensures that you have access to the field spell to play the game, right? Okay. No, that because, makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um it comes up in a like a couple more instances. Like you can protect um your Dark Templar. Not from Valor or Imperm, but from Ghost Spell. Just because if you activate um Eagle Booster on Dark Templar, then they can just chain the Imperm or Valor. But it, it does protect it from Ghost Spell, which did happen once. Yeah, it can also protect your access code going second from Nibiru. Oh, that's pretty huge. Yeah, um, like if you didn't have access to Gachiri, but you hard open the Eagle Booster, you can kind of commit to the access code, knowing that most players will attempt to Nibiru you once you summon the access code to kind of clear it out of the extra deck. 
I like the protection. So you are focused. Most of your monsters are focused on to summoning into the extra mo into the extra monster zone. So that's the main rundown of the deck list. Uh, we're gonna show a quick combo of what the combo does, so you guys can see what it does, and then we'll go into the tournament report of how your matchups went. Okay, starting off with the combo here, we're gonna do the one card combo, and then we'll just talk about where you can fork into different locations. Starting off with the Picari summon. So guide me through this, Zahair and Brandon. Yeah. Um, so basically you start with your normal summon of either starter, you can go, um, you go Picari into I Meet You. Yep. So you grab the I Meet You, which is just the Roto for the deck. Um, you activate I Meet You. Alright. And then I Meet You will grab, you reveal the Fire Phoenix, the fire and then you grab... A Chi Chi. You grab a Chi Chi, and then right. from here you go into Dark Input, in the right zone. Field Spell. And then from here, you have Island, so you're off to the races, right? You just activate it. You can summon a Chi Chi from your hand. And then a Chi Chi effect grabs Doyen, right? And th this is pretty much like the beginning of all of your combo lines, right? Um, either like Picari or a Chi Chi or like the Sinet Mining. The they'll all get you right to this point. Okay. Where you have one Ignister, the Dark Infant, the Doyen in hand. Yep. And then the Ignister that you normal summoned in Grave. Okay. So now yep. I go ahead and special summon out Cyber's Wicked. You go for Wicked. Correct. And so at this point, you activate the Field Spell to summon Doyen under okay. one of the zone's Wicked points too. So it has to be the zone, so don't misplay here. Um, and so here, uh, what we usually do is we Chain Block. Um, so Wicked we first? go Wicked, Chain Link 1, Banishing Infant. Banishing the Infant. Yeah, because the infant and grave does nothing. We have other dark monsters that we can banish for access code. It doesn't recur itself. Yeah, and then we go Doyon Chain Link 2. We're going to grab back the Ignister monster that you normal summoned that turn. So that's going to be... Because you have... Exactly. So you grab the Picari. You haven't special summoned off of... P you haven't special summoned Picari at all that turn. No, and then we grab the Beruru. And now you go into Splash Mage. Splash Mage. Yeah. And so right here, your extra monster zone, uh, or sorry, your main monster zone are all empty. Mm -hmm. And so before you use Splash Mage, you're going to summon Buru from hand. Do we use Doyon effect then, or no? Uh, yeah, you use Doyon effect and you grab I Meet You from Grave. So this is the preparation for the next yeah. turn. So uh, yeah, the way, once you add I Meet You from Grave to hand, the, that card just stays there. And on your following turn, that grabs another starter for you to like loop the whole combo again. Right? Okay. So now we'll go against Mr. Island again. Yeah, Island will summon uh, the green one from hand. Buru. Yeah, Buru. Does the zone matter? The zone doesn't matter. I just wouldn't summon it to Splash Mage's arrow. Okay. It's yeah, so that, that's, that's arrow. the one thing. Yeah, like, worst case scenario, they book a moon you, it's kind of annoying. Now I send a card to the graveyard, that's going to be the Denmari. You send the Denmari. The Denmari is like the one Ignister monster that's just kind of a brick. Okay. Um, It's okay to open because it has an effect uh, similar to Kunkri where... If your opponent attacks an Ignister, you can summon it from your hand. Okay. And it can banish itself from field or hand to... Or from field or grave to negate something, so it's fine. Okay. But we send it a grave here. And then okay. we go Splash Mage, we revive any level 4. So either the Doyon or the Picari. But in this case... Here we have a Doyon, so we're going to summon it back. And right here, we turn... Uh, we turn Buru and Doyon into Wind Pegasus. Okay. Let's grab the Pegasus. And here, Buru's effect activates, where since it was used as a synchro summon, uh, since it was used to synchro summon a Cybers monster, you can summon the other material that you use back. Ooh. Now here you're going to realize we didn't actually gain any extra link material, but what we do gain is in the end board we have Wind Pegasus at Ignister in Graveyard. Okay. So that when they out the arrival of Cybers, they still have to deal with that extra interruption. Also, going second, you can use the Wind Pegasus yeah. to pop their Going back row. second, at this... Because you control two Ignister monsters. Yeah, at, at this point in time, you just get to pop two back row for free. Just okay. because you control So it usually Ignister. forces the Revolt in, a, in the tri Brigade matchup, if they haven't used it already. Okay. So, yeah. from here, where do we go? We go straight into Dark Templar. All three monsters. Yep. Alright. And then here, um, we have the Picari in hand. We normal summon this card. We did not special summon it this turn. Mm -hmm. And so we can summon it off the field spell. Right to the zone Dark Templar points to. To one zone he does point to. Yeah, one of the zones that points to. Okay. 
Um, and this is where Dark Templar procs, where it can summon um, cyber monsters from Grave. We want to summon attributes that aren't the same attributes as the one we have on field, so you don't want to summon Doyon, because you can't use Dark Templar and Doyon to make a rival, they're both dark. Okay. So we're going to summon Buru and we're going to summon Achichi. And from here we go Link 6 Links. into Arrival Cybers. Ooh. Right. And so, yeah, this is basically the end board, right? You give this, you put this towers on board, you tell your opponent, okay, I have four other cards in my hand, hopefully they're hand traps, out this guy, and out the negate and grave, and out my hand traps. If you don't, I'm beating you with this. If you do, you've committed all your resources to it. I'm OTKing you with my starter that I already haven't had next turn. Awesome. So where's the point where it would change if we had like an additional extender? Okay, so we back paddled just now and we're going to go with a two card opening. So the two card opening right now that we kind of went with is that we started with uh, the currently in grid. We have the Picari and we have the Achichi. Achichi, rather than rather than searching for the Doyon, we used the Amichu to get the Doyon and we added the Hiyari. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So we have two monsters rather than one. So where do we go from here? Okay, so from here again, you go into Cyber Swicked. So at this point, um, you can see that like as opposed to the one card combo, the only difference we have is that we have an extra extender in hand. It's mm -hmm. so like this in this case is the Hiari. This could be a Gachiri. This could be Idol Reborn. Um, it can be Idol Reborn if you have like a. Uh, another attribute engrave that isn't cool. uh, one of the four that you already use um sure. so here we take our normal summon we special summon it to the zone we dark templar points to so we do the norm do yeah we summon the normal summon it, it can summon to any zone actually in this case and then here we turn the card that we normal into a infant so let's turn this into a dark infant And so at this point, we activate Dark Templar as Chainlink 1 to summon up to 3 from Grave to the zones of points 2. And then we activate Dark Infant as Chainlink 2, which has an effect where if a Cyberus monster with 2300 attack declares an effect, you can move it to the zone it points to. Okay. And so it effectively clears itself out of the way for you to revive 3 from Grave. There and you change its change... attributes, so you have another attribute for yeah. the arrival Cybers. So and then you chain... Divine. Change it to divine because there's no other divine monster in the deck, it won't ever conflict with anything. So um, and at this point, you can revive um, the wind, the fire, and the light. And right now, because we control an add ignister monster, he already can summon itself for free from hand. Oh, yeah, she's the free summon. All yeah, right. Hiari, Gachiri, Idol Reborn, they're all free summons, they are your sixth monster. Now, do I do because all was, six, or do I use the effect? Point, you, you can use the effect to make a cheery, but here it doesn't really matter, because if they were going to Nibiru you, then they Nibiru already. Um, you just turn all six of these into a 6,000 attack arrival cybers. Woo! Huge. Yeah, and so now th this card is a lot harder for certain decks to out, right? Like, a normal 5300 access code that like most decks can make cannot out this. Mm-hmm. Um, this is really powerful. This is really scary. Yeah. You don't you don't want to be staring down this barrel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So these are the kinds of boards you can do. Of course, there's other utilities in the deck, uh, especially the extra deck where you can go for the kills, such as the transcode access code talker package. Even yeah. if this card gets outed, you're not exactly out of options just yet. There's still a way to make a full comeback. And as long as I believe you have splash mage, that is all still very much possible. Yeah, so usually the play going second is you're going to go to the point where you have Splash Mage. Yeah. And then you're going to summon your two materials. Instead of making Wind Pegasus, or you, you can make Wind Pegasus, you turn Wind Pegasus and the other material into Update Jammer. Yep. And then you can link Update Jammer and Splash Mage into Access Code. And that's and a 4300 Access Code that attacks twice. You have a whole bunch of different attributes in Grave. I think at that point you can like pop three cards Ooh, going second. That's still really good. Um, yeah, and then if you get Nibiru, then you still have Transco Talker in the extra deck. So if you have extra extenders, you make a Link Spider, you can summon your extra bodies. 
And then you can make Transcode Talker revive something from Grave. Maybe a and splash mage. attempt to make a rival Cybers, yeah. Okay. All right. All also right. of note is if they somehow, if they don't out the rival Cybers, you can um, get enough materials on board to make an access code with the arrival Cybers, and then it's an 8300 access code. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of overkill, but that's actually really cool. That's another cool line yeah. to actually get a game on board. There's, there's one other... Uh, play that i think we should probably keep in mind um brandon you want to talk about like the battle phase dark templar stuff oh sure yeah. um so another line to play around nibiru is sometimes you can summon dark templar as your fourth summon and then enter battle phase and attack over one of their monsters in the battle phase and that'll trigger the other effect of dark templar to summon a monster from your graveyard when it destroys something by battle. Mm -hmm. And then um, you so you, you summon a monster from your graveyard to Dark Templar zone and trigger the other effect to summon two more to its zones. Now you have all of the materials on board for an arrival Cybers. And yes, you've summoned more than five times at this point, but you're in the battle phase, so they can't Nibiru you. So then you enter main phase two and first action go into the arrival Cybers because you have turn player priority and they can't ever Nibiru you. Yeah. Well, that's actually really smart. Now that's now that's next level. All right, no, that's a really cool thing to know. That's a really cool combo. Actually, I think it will come up just for some people, especially when- Oh, it, it absolutely will. It's, it's, I think it is a top tier level play. Let's go through your tournament report to see uh, how you did throughout your run, like all your matchups. So now that we know what the deck does, how'd you do in the tournament? I think I, I did surprisingly well for my like first large event playing a deck like this uh i won the project ccg vip qualifier okay and so i had a round one and two buy that's awesome you know that's totally worth yeah. it playing to those events i think it was i and i ended x2 but i was one of the highest uh, ending x2s and i think that was probably because of my buys mm. um round three I actually lost to Eric Velasquez. He was playing um, Dinosaur with Dragoon in it. He al he also topped the event. Um, I misplayed game two, where I opened the field spell and multiple normal summons. And I normal summoned a monster first instead of just activating the field spell and special summoning. Because right. I reached the point where I just had a monster in the main monster zone and I couldn't okay. play around it. Um, game three, he uh, just opened good enough to play through the one ash that i drew right. and then he ended on interruptions i can play through um round four i won the die roll against salamangrate i opened like the field spell and two starters okay, and really so i and <laughs> yeah, i ended on like a three thousand attack arrival because he interrupted me at some point in the combo i made it with like transcode splash mage and extender and I activated um, Eye Contact to draw three cards, and I drew a whole bunch of hand traps. In the following game, I ashed his Mirage Stelio, and then he passed, and I OTK'd him through a Veiler with access code and update jammer. Um, round five, I beat Plunder 2-0. Okay. Um, I made a 6,000 attack arrival on turn one, and he couldn't out it. And uh, game two, he used the field spell, he pitched Whitebeard, and I chained Crow so Whitebeard wouldn't trigger. And then... He made Blackbeard, made Moork, and then on my turn, like, I activated Gadarla on his Moork. He had no other interruptions because I attributed his one interruption, and I just access coded him, protected it by Gachiri. Uh, round six, I played against Striker. I lost to Die Roll. Um, he made me go first, and I made a rival. That, that card's just a really hard card for Striker to out without, like, giving them a couple turns of prep. Game two, I wasn't able to play through like two hand traps, Shark Cannon and Widow Anchor. Ooh, yeah. And game three, we started like trading cards going back and forth. And I resolved an I Meet You and took 2300 damage. And that like bit me in the end because I lost in time. Yeah, round seven, I played against Salamangrate. I lost to Die Roll. And I opened Nibiru both games. And so like just <laughs> on. He committed to summon five. I just stopped him, and then like summoned two two starters and OTK. <laughs> what was his reaction on the second Nibiru? Was like, oh, you got it. It was <laughs> honestly that was probably like the most sack I've done the whole day. Um, it, it was crazy. <laughs> okay, um, shout out to Enzo. Yeah, in round eight, I two owed Subterror. Um, 
Oh. He, I lost the die roll. He went first, activated Red Eyes Fusion, and then I ashed it, and so <laughs> oh. he just passed. <laughs> I, I OTK'd him. I, I OTK'd through a Valor. And then uh, game two, against Subterror, he went first, he set a Guru, and then he set two final battle and passed. And I Kaiju'd the Guru. Oh. Oh. And so he wasn't able to flip the Guru for an interrupt, his back row wasn't live, and so I OTK'd him. Mm. Just through access code, yeah. Oh god. I think you're starting to realize like a pattern here, how like... You just kill them. You just get yeah. rid of the problem and you kill them. Exactly, like, this deck isn't just a uh, summon a tower, sit behind it, like, monkey kind of deck, you know, like... Um, <laughs> this one is, you, you go for it, you murder them, and uh, move on to the next game. <laughs> yeah, like, the whole win condition is, it's not even a rival Cybers, it's surviving turn one, and then OTKing turn two, because they've committed all their resources to out the thing you make. Uh, round nine, I beat Infernoid 2-1. Um, Infernoid? I did not expect yeah, to hear Infernoid. that. Yeah, Infernoid. It was my first matchup of day two, and I won the die roll. I made a rival game one. Um, game two, I, I was still like kind of tired at that event, like kind of, I don't know, just nervous. I ended up not summoning Cybers Wicked in the combo, and I went straight into Splash Mage. Yep. And what that ended up doing is that that stopped me from summoning the Wind Pegasus to keep in Grave for setup. Mm-hmm. And it also stopped me from sending Dunmari from deck to grave oh. to have an effect negation. Okay, that's like two. And so left ended on yeah, ended on I missed out on two inter interrupts there, um, and so like I wasn't able to stop his cards. He summoned Underworld Goddess against me, and then wow, that yeah, is that is that. mean. Yeah, that was fun, and then uh, game three I made him go first. He set Ash. He had Droll in hand. But I, and so on my turn, like, I had the field spell, I normal summon Picari, grabbed, uh, I think, Gachiri from hand, mm -hmm. and I already had Picari in hand. Yep. And so I just activated the field spell and made access code through the droll. And I, like, popped a set monster, saw it was an Ash, it was unfortunate. Um, round 10, I 2-0'd VW. Yeah, I, I won the die roll, I made Arrival at 4,000 attack with Anmari, and, like, I had Ghost Spell in hand. Um... He activated Desires, I ashed it. I believe he banished both of his Chuchas, and he drew Jeanmo. And so that, that was really rough for him, right? Like, he activated Lily, sent Gigi from deck to grave, didn't send a trap, which, like, was concerning. He activated Lala, and then I belled him. It's and then I just OTK'd him on the following turn. And then, uh, game two, he went first. He I think he bricked, because he ended on Shen Shen. And he had to make it by normal summoning Ash Blossom as his tuner. But the Shen Shen is kind of a difficult card to deal with going second just because um, Update Jammer requires being sent to Grave for you to be able to OTK. Mm -hmm. And like Donyo needs cards to be sent to Grave to OTK and whatnot. So I changed my combo line a bit to summon Security Dragon as my first Link 2. And then I used Island to summon... Um, another Ignister from hand, and I turned uh, those two into Update Jammer. And Update Jammer was co-linked with Security Dragon, and so I was able to bounce the Shen Shen back to hand, or er, ba back to the extra deck. And then I went into Access Code and gamed him. Nice. Actually, that's really smart. I mean, that that is a very yeah, clean it's, path. It's another actually. use for just... Security Dragon. That's a very clean path, for sure. Yeah. 11. Round 11. I played against Salamangrate. I... Let's see, I won 2 1. I lost the die roll against him. Uh, game one, he ended on Sunlight Wolf with Imperm and Roar set. I Gadarla the Sunlight Wolf, turning off the Roar. And then I OTK'd him through the Imperm, because I had Gachiri. Okay. I used Gachiri to make access code. It's like I went Gachiri, Chain Link 1, Update 2, Access 3. Okay. And so you can respond to anything, access code became unaffected, and so I was just able to attack through everything. Now that into your nice. top cut. Yeah, top code was kind of unfortunate. I had to play against the uh, blade. Oh, um, okay. What did yeah, you play? Yeah, top code. Yeah. Congratulations on your top thirty-two of YCS, and yeah. uh, maybe there's many more to come. This is Zohair Khan, and of course Brandon. Yeah, this is Brandon's list. Brandon is the one who like put me onto the deck and taught me how to play it. 
Yeah, I, I taught him how to play it on Wednesday, and, and then he learned it well enough to top the YCS, so there we go. Just on the yeah. Wednesday. Just two days worth of practice, you know? That's all you need. Well, that's all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button. Check out mstmerch.com if you guys want to pick up some awesome sleeves, mats, and other card accessories. Well, thank you, Zahir Khan. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, Thanks for and having me. And I'll see you guys in the next one.